Hey guys, JJJ, Joe, Joe Jack back with the third part of the history of distortion. The overdrive. The lightest category of distortions also tries to recreate the sound of a saturated amplifier, as well as the distortions I mentioned in the previous video. But not those dirty channels of heavy beasts. What we want now is the sound of a medium sized tub amp with a slightly higher volume when it heats up the tubs and the sound gains this slightly distorted sound, not as much as the other types of distortion. It's a smoother drive, less compressed, with less sustain, excellent for a good bass of blues or a rock and roll. Think about Eric Clapton, or rather, think of the Eric Clapton sound, because he's not one of the most enthusiastic about pedals. He should prefer the natural drive of an amp or the preamp on the mid boost kit, which even became known as the Eric Clapton kit, installed inside the Fender guitar model with his name. By the way, about the natural drive of the amps, if these pedals try to recreate that sound, why not just use an amplifier? Well, as I said before, many guitar players usually do that using only amplifiers to distort their sound. In fact, many of them are not users of distortion pedals, from Robert Gray to Angus Young. Keith Richards himself, who made the fame of the first fuss, as I showed in the first video, said in a recent interview to Guitar World that it's enough to stand up straight and he needs to know where to put his feet and don't trip over those boxes. Also in the first video, I mentioned some blues men who were interested in the distortion back there. True but many like B.B. King, Freddie King, Albert King, all these kings, were definitely not pedal fans. Even me, without wanting to compare myself with any of these monsters, many times I prefer to play without any pedal. But you may not always have a good amplifier at your disposal, and the pedals allow the same saturation effect in more normal volumes as well as convenience, versatility and some features that sometimes only the pedals offer. That's why I'm here talking about them. So let's go to the overdrives. There are some doubts about which was actually the first overdrive pedal. So instead of looking for a starting point, I will assume that the idea of overdrive was shaping up gradually. Back to history. In 1968, in the first golden era, Electromonics created the LPB1 Linear Power Booster, a box with a manual switch and a boost level control that was connected to the amplifier and the player plugs the guitar in. Some say it could sound like an overdrive when it reaches the boost limit, but it was not a pedal. Although, for those who want to try, today there is a real pedal version of the LPB-1 in the Nano line. In 1969, another booster, the Solar Sound Power Boost, could also take the amplifier to overdrive when close to the limit. David Gilmour would have used this pedal on Shine On You Crazy Diamond. In 1971, a new version, almost equal, was named Color Sound Overdriver and it seems that it's the first time that the name appears. Jeff Beck has recorded the phenomenal blow-by-blow blow with this pedal. For those who want to try them, Macaris put back in production these solo sound pedals. Well, so far all these pedals were boosters, which ended up leading to saturate the signal, the overdrive, when close to the limit. Now, a pedal called overdrive with a more standard control configuration, perhaps the first was the 1974 OD850 from Ibanez. But it seems that this pedal and its successor, the 1976 OD855 Overdrive 2, would be too strong to what we understand today by overdrive. Also in 1976 appears the DOD250 Overdrive preamp, and in 1977 Boss launches the OD-1 Overdrive, yep, separate names. Note that these two have no tone control, 
which is not very common in the current standard overdrive. Finally, in 1979, appears the Ibanez Tub Screamer TS-808, considered by many as the pedal that defines the standard overdrive. The TS family grew, won the TS-9 in 1982, and since then is gaining other variations as well as a flood of clones. Other well-known overdrives that we can mention here are the 1981 Boss SD-1, the 204 Bad Monkey from Digitech, and the obsessive compulsive Photon OCD that I could not specify the exact year of release. Photon began in 1991, and the first reference I found on the OCD was near the year 2000, but if someone know for sure, can correct. By the way, about the year of release, a little complaint. One of the things that gave me more work in this research was to find the story of some of these pedals, the dates, the evolution. Damn, if I had a pedal factory like these that I spoke here, one of the things I would take care with more affection was their story. Publicize it. Sometimes you go to their websites and at best you find just a picture of the pedal and some blah 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 saying how good it is. Sometimes they don't have even a photo of the old pedals. Gee, these are important pedals, part of music history. I don't understand, honestly. When I know the story of something, I am much more interested in it. It's like you're walking in the Place de la Bastille and someone say, well, it's a square in Paris. Yeah, but if you know the story behind the square, you will enjoy much more the ride. Anyway, let's go back to the overdrives. It is also interesting to remember the pedals that have the word blues in their names and that can be classified generically as overdrives. The Boss PD2 Blues Driver, the Digitech Screaming Blues, the DoD Mystic Blues, the MXR Blue Box, the Marshall Blues Breaker, which recreates the sound of a 60s amplifier from Marshall, and whose name comes from one of the Clapton's bands. Look at him again. And I cannot finish without mentioning the rare and expensive 1990 Clone Center, a handmade overdrive, much appreciated by adding drive without changing tone, the famous transparency, the consumer dream of many guitar players who consider this pedal the holy grail of this category. As I did in the other videos, let's go to a typical example of an overdrive sound. Keep in mind that the pedals can sound very different from each other, even when they lie in the same category. By the way, close to the limits, things can get very confusing. Some distortions with little gain may sound like an overdrive, and some overdrives at high settings can easily be mistaken with a distortion. Well, I have some time today, so I'll do a little demonstration on that. This is a Korg overdrive from the mid-80s. Korg is kind of seasonal about pedals, makes a few very interesting, stops, returns with some multi effects, stops again, and recently decided to return with something different. But that's not the case here. This is a great overdrive, something close to TS-808. This other pedal here is a Den Electro Cool Cat Distortion, a more recent line. Good pedal. Classic distortion, strong, well saturated, but well tamed. In a word, British. Both have the corresponding overdrive and distortion on the same lines. There was a distortion on this line of cork, and there is an overdrive in this line of Dan Electro. That is, they were not meant to have a very broad spectrum. This is an overdrive, and this is a distortion. 
I'll play the same part in both and I've set up the volumes and tones so as not to interfere in comparison. Only saturation will make a difference. But the distortion is very light and the overdrive is at maximum. So, who looks more angry? Well, it has a clear intersection zone there. Of course, if I raise the distortion up, the difference will be obvious. And the symbol of the overdrive. Any guitar player? Stevie Ray Vaughan was a guy who quite used the TS family and the type of sound that he made is truly the face of the overdrive. But obviously a lot of people use overdrives. If you want to mention some more current one, John Mayer seems a good choice since he also enjoys a little overdrive box. Well, with this third video I made an overview in the main types of distortion. But there is so much more that we can say. Hybrid pedals, tube pedals, digital pedals, multi-effects, simulations, circuits. If I cheer myself up, I continue the series for a fourth part. See ya!